you waffle? Should I send my client a contract? Should I send them a proposal? Which one is right for this situation? By the end of this video, there will be no more waffling and you'll know exactly if you should send a proposal, if you should send a contract, or the limited circumstances you can combine them into one document. In the comments below, let me know. Do you send a proposal? Do you send a contract? Do you send a document that is the same thing? I'd love to know. Hi, I'm Tiffany Staley, founder of The Artist JD, a place designed to add ease to the legalese of running your creative business. This week's question comes to us from Mary in New York. She asks, when should I send a proposal and when should I send a contract? A contract and a proposal have two completely different purposes and understanding the purpose of what you're sending and what stage you're at in the relationship is the secret to knowing which one you're gonna send. A proposal is a sales tool. It's there to tell your client, this is how I can solve your problem. You need X done and this is how I can get there and this is how much it's gonna cost you. A proposal is there to further the relationship and function as a sales tool. That's exactly what a proposal is. Your proposal likely might have some options about the high touch service and the budget service that you can offer them. Your proposal, in addition to having different price points, might have a general workflow about how you see the project progressing. But ultimately, the goal of a proposal is to get them to say, yes, let's work together. That is the goal of your proposal, not to dive into the nitty gritty about exactly what it looks like to work together and how you're gonna solve any problems that crop up. So while your proposal is there to open the door to having a further conversation about what it looks like to work together, a contract has a completely different purpose. A contract is just there to get everybody on the same page by literally getting everybody on the same page about what the roles, responsibilities, and the nitty gritty of day in and day out working together looks like. I like to say that a contract is there just to make sure that you're not unintentionally disappointing your clients. We've all worked with those clients who have completely unreasonable expectations about what you're going to do for the cost. And so a contract is just there to make sure that you and your client have similar understandings about what the process looks like and what you have to do and what you need from them in order to get to their end run goal. Because often you need things from your client in addition to payment in order to get them that successful result that they want at the end of your project, at the end of working together. So that's the purpose of your contract, to make sure everybody's on the same page about what the relationship is going to look like from a nitty gritty standpoint. So your proposal is the 10,000 foot view, your contract has all of the trees in it. Does the idea of a contract being there exclusively to make sure everyone is on the same page feel a whole lot better to you than the idea of hoarding over somebody with a contract? If so, hit that like button. What are the limited circumstances where you might have them one in the same? The most common reason I see that people want them to be one in the same are examples like Frank. Frank creates memorable first impressions online by doing brand and website design. He only offers one package. He on his website, he describes what this package is and basically what he does is does a single website at a time and from start to finish, he does your entire project in four weeks. So Frank's proposal really is the page on his website. It is explaining what his services are, how he does, how, how it works. And then what happens is if you're interested in Frank's services, then you click the contact him button and then you meet with him for a 15 minute phone call to say, 
um, let's make sure that this is a good fit, that we're going to want to work together, and all of those kinds of things. And then Frank follows that up with his combined kind of proposal and contract that says, this is how I'm going to get you your website design, and the, you know, with all of the contract details in it. And so it works really well to have that proposal and contract combined if you only have a single offering that you do and you kind of pre-clear people before you've sent that first document to them. But most of us aren't like Frank, and we're going to go ahead and send a proposal that outlines this is how I think our relationship is going to look and then we'll say, if this sounds good, let me know and I'll follow it up with my contract. This proposal doesn't have to be long and detailed. In fact, for my law firm, they usually are just an email that kind of bullets what the projects are that I think that they would benefit from and what the costs associated with those are. You don't have to do something long and complicated. You just need to convey the information and keep the conversation rolling. Then once you've gotten on the same page about how you're going to help your client get that end run goal that they want, then you can follow it up with the nitty gritty of this is what exactly it looks like to work together. So how are you going to put together this contract? I've got two resources for you. The first is totally free. It's a 4,600 plus word article that breaks down why contracts exist if you need that formal written contract and 17 sections that you might want to consider including in your contract. The second is a course that's available exclusively for members of the Artist Courtyard. This course is designed to help you step by step walk through the process of creating a contract and gives you access to multiple contract templates that you can use to quickly and easily put together your contract. There is a, an example of a freelance contract in there. There's one that is designed for working with coaching clients. So no matter the kind of clients you have, you'll be able to use one of these contracts as your jumping off point to make it very easy to put together your client contract. Before you go, I've got one question I'd love to know the answer to in the comments. When do you think you'll use a proposal and a contract separately? And when do you think it might make sense to have them together? I can't wait to hear your answers. If you liked this video, make sure you hit that like button and hit the subscribe button so you can get notified each time a new episode drops. I've also left a link to a video I did last season designed to help you decide if you need that formal written contract and when you can get away with other ways of having a contract. Talk to you soon.